Welcome to part 9 of Among Us series and this is the C Sharp version and in this part we're going to be adding the ability of the player freezing the other player. To show that the player is frozen I'll add a sprite with these icicles. Let's reset the position, move it in front, set the order layer to 1. So by default I'll disable this sprite. Now we need to go and add the ability of freezing the other player. I'll put that logic in the character movement script. So let's go edit script. So this is our character movement logic and I'll add another variable and this is going to be a private boolean and the variable name is going to be frozen. By default the bool variable is false but let's actually just write that out and in this file I did some modifications to the character movement from what I created initially for the character. Let me walk you through the changes. So if you watch that character movement creation I used the scale to flip the character animation. I had the private variable scale x so we don't need that anymore and then at start I stored the initial a local scale. I remove that as well and then logic to flip the animation. The logic that I used was this right here using this local scale and setting it back. So instead of doing that I decided to use the sprite renderer instead and sprite renderer has the option of flip x so that's what I did instead. Check for the velocity if the velocity is less than zero then it's set to true otherwise it's set to false. Much simpler solution but sometimes the simple solutions come later. Back to our freezing logic. So right here I have frozen. What I want to do is right here when I check if the photon view is mine then I return meaning that I disable all the controls for the character. I also want to check if the character is frozen. I'll put an or and check if it's frozen. If the player is frozen or the player is not mine I won't be able to control this character. So that's the part of disabling the controls. Now I need to add the logic for freezing other characters. So how are we gonna do that? First I need to know who's in front of me and who I can freeze. So for that let's use physics overlap circle. So the point that I want to start with is the position of our character. So transform that position. The radius let's set it to 1 for now. Then I'll also use a player layer mask to mask out the collision only between the players. I'll have to add a serialized field for that so we can pass it in as an input. And back here the return is going to be a collider 2D array. So I'll store those as players. Let's create a for each loop and we'll be looking at every player inside of the players. So the first thing that I need to check is to make sure that the player is not my own character. So to do that you can do player dot game object and check if it equals game object. If it does we can say continue that means it's going to go to the next player and here you probably want to find the closest player but I'm not going to do that in this video maybe later on. Instead I'm going to just use the first player that is not my own to freeze. But there is still one condition that we need to check and it's if the player is frozen already. We don't want to try to freeze this player again if he is already frozen. So we need to check if the player that we're trying to freeze is actually frozen. Now my variable frozen is actually private. So to do that let's actually modify this to be a public and we're going to use a different approach. So since I want to just allow get access public then it's going to be frozen with a capital letter. That's an approach that we can use to still keep the variable private but we can allow variable to be get publicly. I'll have to replace the lowercase frozen with the uppercase frozen just to follow the C sharp standard. Now the reason why I allow the frozen get to be public is because right here I need to check for that condition. We got our player and now we need to get the character movement component from the player. Get component, character movement, and let's store that actually in a variable. And I'll just name it player movement. Now in here I want to check if player movement frozen is true. If it is true then I want to just continue to the next player because this player is already frozen. If it's not true then we want the character to be frozen. To do that we'll call player movement dot freeze. So that means we need to create another method freeze. So let's create another method public void freeze and in here we can do the logic for freezing. So first let me do it without actually implementing multiplayer so that you can see the difference but we'll actually reuse the same code. So to freeze uh, the character like I said I want to display that sprite and that sprite is actually a child so I can get child zero. Currently I have only one child so I'll, I'll just keep it at that. You can create another game object input that is going to connect the image but I'll just do it real quick like this. Set active and I want to set active to true. 
Now that's going to turn on the sprite image of that ice. And the other thing that I want to do is set frozen to true. Now you can see that I get an error and it's because I don't have a set option here. So if I add set here, it's going to make the set function public. But if you want to make it private, you can add a private before it. And that's going to allow me to change the value of frozen inside of this class. So the error goes away. I think that's it for the freeze logic. Now inside of the update, this logic right here that I have for physics 2D, currently it's going to be triggered every frame. And I actually want to trigger it with a key input. So let's pull input, get key down and key code, and we'll use F key for freezing. Put all of that inside of this if statement. So at the frame where our key is down, we're going to trigger this logic for freezing on the character. So this right here should work on our own machine, but it's not going to work on multiplayer. And let me demonstrate that. So first, I'll go back here and I need to do the configuration for character movement, the player Larry mask, and I have my player on the player mask. I don't know if you guys have that on player mask already or not. So if you don't have a player mask, add it and change your character to the player mask. So I'll select player for the player mask. Let's go back here. Let me make sure that I have the bolt version turned off and I have the C sharp version on. Click play to make sure that there's no errors. Okay, and now I can build and run it. So here is the build version and you can see that the character got spawned. I can move him around and let's launch another build version. So here's my second one and there we go. I can move around and it's synced. Now let's try out freezing the other character. So if I get close enough, I think one unit is what I said. Click F and you can see that the character, it's hard to tell, but the character is frozen right here in the scene where I clicked F. But it didn't freeze the character over the multiplayer and the player can still move around, although he's frozen here and he can actually freeze the other character and it's exactly the same thing and it's because the freeze method we actually don't run it over multiplayer it's not communicated across the network that 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 character is frozen so let's go back to the code and fix that so this part right here we actually want to trigger on all of our players side so in everyone's game this function should be triggered for that specific character so to do that, we need to create a function that can be run across the network. Since we are using Photon for this game, there is an attribute that we can have upon RPC. And that attribute actually makes the function to be a function that can be triggered across the network. I'll copy the freeze method that I had before and I'll add RPC in front of it so that we know the difference uh, between the functions. And this one, we don't have to have it public. It can be private. It's still going to work. So since the logic was moved right here, we need to change what we do inside the freeze method itself. And we want to call this RPC freeze method over the network. For that, I can access the photon view and we already have access to it right here. We populate it on start and I want to do an RPC call. So let's look for RPC. There are two options that we have here and it's the target difference. So we can do RPC target or target specific player, but I'm going to use the RPC target. So first thing that I need to pass is the method name. Then I need to pass in the target. And after that, I can pass the parameters. I don't have any parameters for this method. So for the name, we use the method name right here, RPC freeze. So let's add that in for the target. It's RPC target and there's different options for the targets. So you can select those options and you can read the difference between them. But I'm going to use the old buffered so that any user that joins after is going to receive this RPC call as well. I just noticed that I misspelled RPC. Let's fix that. So let's save. And basically that's the change that we had to make to convert it from just a single player version to actually be ran on the network. Let's go back to Unity and test it out. I'll build and run it again. So here's our first player and let's launch our second player. Okay, so it looks like everything is synced. We can walk around and let's try the freezing part. So if we get close to the character, click F and you can see that the character is actually frozen on both sides. So let's try to move and the movement doesn't work for that character. Let's add another character and see if that freeze actually is persistent. So here's our third player. 
and you can see that as soon as he joins he can also see that that character is frozen so that's the benefit of using the buffered so here is our character and let's try freezing the other one there you go so i hope this gives you a good demonstration how to use pawn rpc attributes to make methods called over the network and how to use that in your games now you might have noticed that there is one issue with our character and it's the fact that the character is actually not flipping based on direction moving and that's the change that i did which causes this issue so for that the reason why it's doing it is because our flip animation is actually located inside of the freeze and is mine logic and we actually want to move it outside right here and get the velocity from the rigid body 2d velocity instead of the velocity so that's going to fix that problem so check the direction before we check the logic of ownership and all of that stuff this does create a one frame delay between the flip but i don't think you'll be able to notice that so let's click save now there's one change that I'm going to have to do to the character. Let's go to Unity, select the character. And the change is that I have Photon Transfer View. So I actually send the position, rotation and scale. And I'm not sending the velocity of the character. And I need the velocity to know which direction the character is moving to flip the character in the right way. Since I don't need the scale, I'll switch it from using the Photon Transform View to using the Rigid Body View instead. So remove Component and let's add the Photon Rigid Body to D View instead. So I'm synchronizing the velocity and I'll enable teleport for large distances. The distances I'll switch from three to one. So if there's a distance that the character needs to move more than one unit to synchronize with the character, the character is just going to teleport there instead of trying to use velocity to get the character to that point. So that right there should solve that issue and we can actually build and run it and test it out. That is it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. Click on the like button and I'll see you in the next video.